Welcome to Shook Cover Look, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here for the next installment of... Adrian Reed's Twilight. Yeah. Really enjoying this. Are you? Yeah. I'm glad you feel good about it's it. It's not bad. I'm glad that you're being subjected to it after three years of reading Harry Potter. Yeah, but this will be over in like a month or two, and then we can just move on to something else in like the three years you put in with Harry Potter. Well, after this, in fairness, we're going to open it up to voting, and you don't seem privy to any of the options that are going to be on that poll. They're not good options. They're not. But, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll yeah. get there. Anyway, this is Adrian Reed's Twilight, chapters 20 through 12 of Stephanie Meyer's Twilight. Uh, basically, what we had going on here, Edward and Bella continue their courtship, uh, and it basically becomes a series of 20 questions. Uh, we discover that his family doesn't approve of things. Uh, Bella seems to continue to keep this hidden from Charlie. Uh, and the Black family. We get a scene with the Black family as well, which I think is uh, interesting. We should talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then Edward drives Bella to the woods to reveal what happens when a vampire is in the direct sunlight. Which makes me giddy because you don't know yet, do you? No, I do not. Oh boy. That next chapter's a doozy. Uh, also, by the way, today is mine. Today is yours? Today is mine. Why is today yours? What's your favorite color? Green. I'm a green man. Okay. You Where done? would you like to... No, but it's my day. I get to mix the questions in as they come to me. Okay? Okay. Are we like... Uh, so at this point now, like, we can't progress the plot forward in our 28-minute video, so we just ask questions? Because that feels like what this is. No, so so the, the the little deal where they each own a day of asking the other's questions is cutesy and realistic. No. Yes. No. These are games that young couples play. Okay, that's fine. This is a flirt game. Good, so mention it, establish it, but don't use two chapters to waste it. it the, 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 the chapters were not focused completely on those oh, things. Oh, God. No, he, honestly, it feels like Stephanie Meyer was just at the point. She's like, you know what? I have a lot of things I want to address. But I, I filled out an entire character sheet for these people. I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to have them ask the questions that people are going to ask, and we'll make that work. We'll just answer them. Good times. It's not good. Okay. It is not. I, I don't know why it's not. Why isn't it? It's just not. What, no, th you don't get to do that. So instead of like leading the reader to ask their own questions or establishing things that the reader can pick from the text, we literally are just sitting in car and be like, so what's your favorite color? Tell me about it. No, no, no. We're not just doing that, though. We are. That's no. all this is. We're, we're doing other things while that's taking place. We're driving. That, so that is, you're talking about plotting. This is about characterization. Okay. And what's going on there is the characters are learning each other as we're learning them. And it's not just something like, what's your favorite color? Because we're getting commentary the whole time from, um, what's her name again? <sighs> Isabella Swan. No, it's a bell, but what's her name? Bella. Do you feel better about that? <laughs> I'm glad you had that moment. There are literally gifts now of you just like laughing at your bad. They call them dad jokes. You have dad jokes and you don't have children. I am your children at this point. That's not a dad joke. That's funny. No. People are referring to them as Adrian's dad jokes. But that's really funny. Which, by proxy, makes me your son. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Well, quiet down, son. We got stuff to talk about. There is a point where they're like, what's your favorite color? She's like, well, today it's brown. And he just kind of gives her a look like that's... Like the worst answer ever. It's just so bland and boring. And she's like, yeah, like me. But mm -hmm. what's the next question? I don't know. What's don't your care. favorite gemstone? Okay. Who asked that question? A, no one. That's why it's funny. Okay, it's funny. B, she answers and he says, why is it that? And she says, because you're here today. Uh -huh. Okay, that tells us how weak Bella is. How romantic. How wonderful. I do think, though, credit where credit is due, we get a decent scene here. We do. Where? Where do we get a decent uh, scene? Where we get the introduction of Billy Black, Jacob's mm. father, uh, who is considered a uh, elder of their uh, community. Uh, and he knows something's afoot. He knows something ain't right. But he plays it off very subtly. It's a, it's a very realistic scene where they come over and like, well, we're here. And he's like, you don't watch the game? Like, well, our TV is broken. So, yeah. This is realistic to me. These are my friends. But there is just a little bit of intrigue. There is just a little bit of conflict between uh, the idea of the other vampires and the werewolves. And Billy Black is alluding to that. He knows what's going on here, but he's not letting Bella in on that fact. So we get this little secret building where we know what's going on. Bella thinks she knows what's going on, 
but really old Billy Black's starting to dig. I, Who is the only one that really, well, Charlie doesn't know, Dad doesn't know, but that's because dads have funny jokes and not much else. Um, who's the other character that's really out of the loop there? Jacob. Jacob. Yeah. Jacob's sort of a punching bag. He is. Jacob is disposable and usable to Bella, and that is an interesting dynamic. Okay. We talked a little bit about character dynamic last week, so I, I think there is some, some things that are building here. And it is, so this is, if this were a y, a, 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 an NA text, a new adult text, the dynamic would almost certainly be that Edward takes Bella's virginity. Bella resents him and takes Jacob's virginity. Just because the, the dynamics there are sexual dynamics, okay. but they're not sexualized, and they are dynamics of jealousy. And one of my questions about this is Bella's sexlessness realistic? Um, I'm inclined to believe that women are far more sexual than the media would have us believe. Um, after all, they're people, right? I remember 17-year-old Adrian, and I'm not sure 17-year-old Adrian was a people. Nah. I was a knuckle-dragging, woolly erection from the time I was 13 to the time I was 28. So I can't believe, now some of it is because of the fact this is YA, but we never talk about sex. We never talk about sexuality. We talk about prettiness. Okay. We talk about a physical charge that is there between them when the VCR is rolled into class. It's, it flirts the subject. It's very much a throwback to like early Victorian era literature. Who else was really, who else was Victorian? Oh, good old Edward himself. No, well, and Jane Austen. And Jane Austen, just saying. Oh, but it is kind of a little bit of a throwback. It, it is. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and I'm not saying that this should be, this should be overt sexuality. Oh, we there's nothing wrong with it by any means. Hardcore pornography on page. But what I'm saying sure is, exists. like there is like, oh yeah, I'm sure that's on the internet somewhere. It's there. Um, we don't even really get allusions to it, Okay. right? We get her, swooning over his muscularity. We never get the question, what could those muscles do? Fair statement. Uh, and maybe that's uh, the readers, the people who are reading this. So, but real quick before we move on. Carry on. Anyone who's watching this and has been a 17 year old girl, I would like that, I would like that comment. I would like to be able to read that comment. If the sexlessness of Bella is realistic, or if it is just this novel having to fall into YA. Right. And if you're also watching this and you have any kind of artistic ability, if you could please draw me 17 year old Adrian as a knuckle dragging woolly erection. Yes. Because that is the funniest visual I have ever seen. Thank you. I'm sure Peter Clark is on the case. That's. Peter, we need you right now. <laughs> we need you to step up. Uh, <laughs> I'm done with that. Anyway, uh, no, I, I think it's, uh, it, it's an acceptable ideal, this uh, uh, sexlessness in this particular text, but it is still there. It is very Victorian. It's very reserved, but we're still addressing it in other ways. I think it kind of romanticizes this idea. It's the thing you remember. It's that cute uh, courtship, uh, that relationship building, the innocence of this period Absolutely. for people. I, I think that it's a good thing, it is. Credit where credit is due, I've said that like 20 times today. Just real quick, did you say four people? Four people? This is four people? Oh, oh, four, okay, I thought you meant four as in, I was, because I, I knew Edward, Bella, and Jacob, I didn't know if there was a- Oh yeah, we got someone. to the fourth part, yeah, okay. it's fine. Okay, okay. No, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's good, it's, it's playing it quite well. Uh, it's very much a throwback to a Victorian era of literature, a more reserved era of literature, but it is still definitely addressing the feelings of sexuality, the ideas behind it, while not exploiting it. See, so the argument that I would have is that, sure, this game that we play where today's mind for asking questions is very cutesy, and it is that 17-year-old type of cutesy, but, and, and maybe I was just ahead of the game, by the time I was 17, cutesy was just part of it, okay. right? I was a sexually active person. And I think that m if memory serves, most of the people that I knew that were not sexually active, they were trying to roll those dice into the game, okay. right? It wasn't just 
this cold reserve that we get here. And I, I think part of that is being limited by the YA genre, even though this was very early YA foundational text, okay. right? YA as we know it sort of springs from this era of writing. That's fair. Uh, I think What's your favorite number? 42. Uh, I think there's a, a terrible uh, answer. I know, you liked it. Uh, there's more to it as well. There's a lot of uh, sexual allusions. We get a scene where Edward is discussing hunting and how Bella will never see him hunt because that's when he is most primal. Right. That is when he's animalistic. Emmert hunts like a bear, Edward hunts like a lion, and Dalton hunts like a cub. That's fair. Bring me food, spit it into my mouth. It's all right. Freud. Anyway, what I'd like to get at here is... I think uh, I know some words you don't. That's where I'm going. Let's but, go with that. Um, we get this idea of this animalistic primal Edward, which is a, uh, a sexual archetype. Uh, it's the idea of the muscular animal. Uh, it, it, it's that primal instinct. It's being hinted at even in that little scene there, uh, and that's all fine and dandy. The keen eye is going to pick up on that. The unkeen eye, somebody picking this up for the first time, maybe they haven't read much of anything before, is still going to have that rolling around in their mind, that idea of Edward the animal. I, so there's some good stuff going on here. Edward, I like that. Edward friend. the animal. Edward the animal. That's but, my wrestling name. But we also have that sheer curiosity from Bella on what it looks like. Absolutely so. Um, but to confound the metaphor, he only hunts with his family. Okay. Right? So there's something there to be played with. Pun perhaps intended. <laughs> But I'm not sure that it's fully baked. Okay. Uh, is well, that fair? That, that is fair. We'll see if it develops a little bit. We'll see if Bella is ever uh, going to experience the hunt uh, and how she may react to that. Um, and uh, if we're going to go sexual metaphors as well, experiencing the hunt, uh, it's very much a uh, allusion towards sex. Uh, at some point, this is going to become a thing in their relationship where she's going to witness this. And that primal instinct, that moment... That's going to be really a big defining factor. It really is. It's going to be messy. It's going to be a little strange. But uh, we'll see if she can get through it. Are you talking about witnessing the hunt now, or are you talking about sex? A little bit of both. But for your point, what were you saying? The hunt. Okay. Uh, because we're right on the precipice of that, correct? Ooh. That's where we end, is we're in the woods with... Mm, no, we're going to find out what happens when a vampire goes in the sunlight. Edward is still uh, adamant he is never going to show Bella the hunt. At this point, she, he is going to show her what a vampire looks like in the direct sunlight. So he's going to get naked on screen? Maybe. Maybe he's going to take his shirt off. Naked Yeti? A little bit. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I God, I am off on track now. There are too many odd sexual metaphors being played out here. I'm afraid to say anything. Uh, but anyway, what we get here is this last scene. He is taking her out into the woods, a private area that he enjoys. And all he is doing is showing her what a vampire looks like in the sunlight. Because that has been in vampire lore, the big bad. You know, the sun will kill you. And this, it is different. Something else happens, and we are going to figure out what happens next. Uh, it's also interesting that we're in the woods. Okay. And we're in the woods for something good. Which is rare. Right. But when you're the bad creature, the woods are home. Right. Um, and I'm not sure... Which tangent I want to go off on this. The bad boy. If Edward were not a vampire, but were instead a gang member, how different is this text? So is it the fantasy element that enables this to function? Okay. And enables it to be consumable? Okay. Because in the real life, this gets translated back down to the bad boy. And if the bad boy's not allowing you to drive anymore, <laughs> he's picking you up for school, right? Um, if the bad boy is changing moods as quickly and effortlessly as Edward does and is making you feel stupid as often as possible, is that a healthy relationship? It is not. It is not. Uh, we were talking about you know, healthy relationships, though, and the idea of this you know, being the early stages of intimacy in Bella's life. Uh, I, I kind of like the idea, going back to the woods. Uh, the woods are the big bad in the literature. We've talked about that. Nothing good comes from the woods. 
But maybe this is just a Midwestern thing, and they are obviously apparently in Washington. I wonder if you're going where I'm where I'm thinking. Go God ahead. forbid, don't confuse Oregon and Washington. My mistake. But they're in the same area, Oregon and Washington. Uh, it, the woods are where you go, man. That is where you get away from society. That's where you get to be away from things. You get to be more vulnerable in the woods. Where are you going with this? Well, when you were first getting into sexuality, where did some of those... Did, did you ever have woodly encounters? Sometimes you gotta go to the woods, man. Gotta go the to, only place for privacy or is the, the woods. Or the park or things like that, right? So it, there are some things here that are being played with in the idea that, you know, Edward's a vampire, we're going out to his hunting grounds to see something different. But when it comes down to it, this is really just a, uh, a teenage love story. That's what we're looking at here. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I would like to go back in the text to chapter 10. It was such a thick fog that I was a few feet down the driveway before I realized there was a car in it. A silver car. My heart thudded, stuttered, and then picked up again in double time. I didn't see where he came from, but suddenly he was there, pulling the door open for me. Do you want to ride with me today? He asked, amused by, amused by my expression as he caught me by surprise yet again. There was uncertainty in his voice. He was really giving me a choice. I was free to refuse, but part of him hoped for that. It was a vain hope. Um, I've got to say that this is a tactical error on Edward's behalf. Once you notice they're falling in love, the only move is to run away as fast as possible. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. You don't show up the next day. All right. You don't call for three days. Okay. Right? So that's just a tactical error. I'd like to get out there for any, any young Edwards in the crowd. Or well, just a young gentleman. He's going to go pick her up. And Edward does have a very uh, old sensibility about him. Uh, he does seem to be the gentleman, but he is from a different time. So I, I wish that was played with a little bit more. There are hints of it by, for sure. But I wish we had played with it a little bit more to get that uh, Victorian courtly right. Edward. It, and it, the relationship dynamic between between the two of them sort of reminds me of the Remus Lupin Tonks relationship. Okay. No, you can't see me hunt. No, I can't be the father of your child. We're going to be together all the time. And Remus Lupin even seemed sort of regal and uh, okay. Victorian, didn't he? And Tonks was the, the young one that was kind of hip, you know? And she's the young one that's sort of hip with the, everybody wants to take her to the dance, you know? Okay. Um, but again, I worked with a woman who treated me the way that Bella treats Edward. The whole, I'm going to act offended until you apologize shtick. I can't stand it. Yeah. I cannot stand it. I would never apologize. I would just say something slightly more offensive. And it created a terrible dynamic. Obviously, she was in love with me. Clearly, clearly. That's how that works. Okay. But that dynamic here is twofold. And that's where we're, we're, we're cycling into negative loops. Okay. Right? We're cycling into he makes her feel stupid. She makes him feel guilty. He makes her feel uh, young. She makes him feel out of date. And it's unhealthy. Yeah, it is. yeah it's, it's unhealthy, but it's very realistic, is it not? It, it is realistic. And it, the worst part is when you come down to it, she's basically just food. This is just a cat and mouse game where uh, the good old vampire is just playing with his dinner. Which is, again, now, I, I have picked up enough through pop culture to know that Jacob is a werewolf, probably. Um, but without that dynamic there, She's treating Jacob the exact same way. Okay. She's manipulating him, isn't she? Okay, that's fair. Um, kind of stringing him along, too. Stringing him along. Um, and she... Am I wrong that she observed his body as well? She, she said that he was thick and muscular and strapping and all of these things. She's very observant when it comes to the male physique. So there is a sexual charge there as well. So th this, this mirror relationship between Edward and Bella, then Bella and Jacob, is very interesting. Okay. I think that it's, I think that, again, I have to say this again, I think people hate Twilight because it's in vogue to hate Twilight. Is this the best written text of all time? Absolutely not. Are there interesting character dynamics here? Okay. Um, you when, can keep defending that point all you want. When was the last time you saw a grown man naked? I... 
I don't know the answer to that. Okay, just a question. Just throwing oh, it out there. Oh. Do you like movies about gladiators? Is that where you're going with this? <laughs> oh, this is why. This is why. Anyway, um, one thing I would like to point out here, and I'm sure you're going to give me a good answer for this. Uh, why does no one like Edward? Edward seems like a very respectable young man. He's obviously from a well-off family. Very polite, very handsome young man. Uh, so drives a nice car, does good things. This is a small town. Edward is an outsider. Okay. Edward is an outsider and act like his, acts like his shit doesn't stink. Edward is an outsider who acts like his shit doesn't stink. And most of the time, he's correct, right? He okay. is handsome. Um, he does drive a nice car. He, he is very stately, right? Us handsome men have to deal with this sort of dynamic all the time. Oh, is that what it is? Yes. I, I'm sorry. I've never had this experience. Yeah, I, I, That's what we're getting at. I got to tell you, it's Thank difficult. You. Thank you. Because people will hate you for no reason. I'm and glad you could just, clear that up. Just sheer jealousy. I, my train of thought is so bad right now. You're talking about like, well, he acts like his shit doesn't seem like he doesn't shit, Adrian. It's a blood, diet of blood. He's fine. Yo, he's straight pee, huh? It's, it's straight pee. He's fine. That's where we're at at this level of literary yeah, analysis. That's, that's what's on my mind right now. Uh, but he, I, I can give you the outsider. I can give that to you. It, it, it is a small town. Small town communities do this. But beyond that, he seems to be the perfect suitor. The perfect Victorian suitor for this young woman. Again, we're feeling very Jane Austen here. Well, and again, the women seem to love him, right? They do. You say no one likes him. Parents don't seem to like him. The boys don't like him. Okay, okay. The girls seem in love with him. Again, th these are the problems that we sort of have I'm to sorry. deal with. We've got to traverse on a, on a, on a daily basis. I haven't basis. had this life experience, so I, I don't understand I, it. I'm here to explain it but for you. But let's be honest. If I'm the face you bring home to meet Dad, he doesn't like me anyway. <laughs> it's all downhill. Why'd this, you bring a werewolf home? Yeah, this is the one who's like, oh, so this is, we're going through that phase now. <laughs> okay, okay, this is fun. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna check under your bed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> because I know he doesn't have an apartment. <laughs> He's looking for somewhere to sleep. No, I, I, I'm looking for your stash. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're checking under your bed and your top drawer. That's where we're going. This was fun. <laughs> anyway, um, where do you wanna go with this here? On page 227, while talking about this sort of sexual and dynamic sort of thing, uh, we get this quote from Bella about her father. I sympathized with him. Um, well, maybe I should start a little bit earlier. I'm not going to that dance, Dad, I glared. Didn't anyone ask you? He asked, trying to hide his concern by focusing on rinsing the plate. I sidestepped the minefield. It's a girl's choice. Oh, he frowned as he dried his plate. I sympathized with him. It must be a hard thing to be a father living in fear that your daughter would meet a boy she liked, but also having to worry if she didn't. How ghastly it would be, I thought, shuddering, if Charlie had even the slightest inkling of what exactly of exactly what I did like. Um, let's contrast that. Being terrified that your daughter's going to bring a boy home versus being a mother and hoping your son is a lady killer. Okay. Right? Is We've it, had this conversation before. We have this conversation periodically, especially as it pertains to YA uh, literature. Um, but it is, again, a, another way that we fall victim to conditioning. Okay. Right? Um, now, I had never had daughters, but I, I had a younger sister. I made sure that there were people who were terrified of me because, no, you don't get to, right? Um, it's a different dynamic. And I think it's because of the risk analysis involved. Okay. Right? So here... We're literally playing with, with this young woman, Bella's life, right? Okay. What's, what happens if you bring the wrong girl home? Odds are much lower that she's going to kill you. Fair, fair. What's the Margaret Atwood quote? Women, men are afraid women will laugh at them. Women are afraid men will kill them. Okay. Um, so there's, there's that dynamic at play. Oh, we're already 25 minutes into this thing? Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll just put that forward to, to be looking for going forward. Also on 27, uh, he waited his car, not appearing to watch as I shut the door behind me. Without bothering to lock the deadbolt, I walked to his car. She's really playing it dangerously, huh? He's living that dangerous life. Living that dangerous life. So that is um, corny, but it's a little way in which we're communicating something. Okay. 
Well, leaving that door unlocked, it's a thing. It is. It's inviting him in, if you would. Very vampire-esque. Yeah. Um, on page 29, 229, um, we get this sentence. We were at school by now. Tense-wise, that's a very strange sentence. This is in past tense. Okay. But then we're communicated, we were at the school by now. That is strange. <clears throat> so I think that's that's one of the... I think I mentioned that in the very first video. Writerly snafu? Well, it's just uh, there are some strange tense things going on here. Okay. Uh, and then we have this on 220, 232 to 233. His quiet probing questions kept me talking freely, forgetting in the dim light of the storm to be embarrassed for monopolizing the conversation. Finally, when I had finished deta detailing my cluttered room at home, he paused instead of responding with another question. Are you finished? I asked with relief. Not even close, but your father will be home soon. Charlie, I suddenly recalled his existence and sighed. I looked out in the rain-darkened sky, but it gave nothing away. How late is it? I wondered out loud as, as I glanced at the clock. I was surprised by the time Charlie would be driving home by now. It's twilight, Edward murmured, looking at the western horizon obscured as it was in the clouds. His voice was thought... Did you highlight it? Yeah. Uh, was thoughtful as if his mind were somewhere far away. I stared at him and gazed unseeingly into the windshield. Uh, I was still staring when his eyes suddenly shifted back to mine. It's the safest time of the day for us, he said, answering the unspoken question in my eyes. The easiest time, but also the saddest in a way. At the end of one day and in the return of night, darkness is so predictable. Don't you think? He smiled wistfully. I like the night. Without dark, we'd never see the stars, I frowned. Not that you see them here much. So that is the second time that we have the um, title of the novel. And not a bad quote either. That's a fairly decent. I, I could get behind that quote. Yeah. Do you like Josh more than me? Do I? Yes. Yes, for the most part. Okay, well, I'm done with questions. Fair enough. Do you have anything else you want to address this week on Twilight? Um, this week on Twilight. We don't have much time, but I do have other talking points. So that's fine. These aren't big ones. Okay. Um, but this one, I'll raise this one right before we end. Turn right on one ten on on the one ten. He instructed just as I was about to ask. I obeyed silently. We are again falling into this sort of follower, sort of subjugated, sort of submissive role. For what's her name? Isabella Swan. No, it's Abel. Um, we are falling once again into that trap. And I am interested to see where it goes, at least by the end of this book. And depending on the votes, maybe going forward. Well, we will be seeing where it goes next week. And we're going to find out what happens when vampires are exposed to sunlight next week on Adrian Reed's, tw Harry, Adrian <laughs> Reed's <laughs> Twilight, chapters 13 through 15. I'm so used to saying that. I'm sorry it slipped. Uh, and if you'd like to uh, join us on this lovely adventure of Adrian Reed's Twilight, Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment as Adrian requested earlier, letting us know your experiences if you were at one point in your life a 17-year-old woman. And if you'd like to help us create more great content like this here on Strip Cover Lit, there's a link, as always, to our Patreon to be found in the description below. Also, don't forget to come back tomorrow for uh, Variety Hour. On Friday, we have Salty Reads Like a Professor. And don't forget that we are also going through Again But Better by Christine Riccio here on, on the channel. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, we are.